Hello and welcome to part 3 of the Backbone.js video tutorial series. Today we'll be talking about routers. Um, sorry I didn't get this out a day earlier like I had planned. I got stuck up north of my parents for Easter and didn't have my headset or anything on me up there. So we'll pick it up today. Uh, same setup as for the views. Need jQuery again, underscore, and backbone. Um, so, routers. Um, routers use the URL, or at least a part of the URL, to define what to do. So, a lot of times in applications nowadays, and with a hash tag and then put anything back here you know and depending on what's back here the router will read whatever is past the hash tag and judge what to do depending on that right there so let's start setting one up and I'll explain a little better then so we'll do pretty much the exact same thing that we keep on doing. Just backbone dot router this time dot extend. Now, oops. This time we need one special one called routes. We need this one. And in here we define two things. This right here, the first part, will be the route. So it uses sort of a regular expression type thing to uh, to view that what's past the hashtag, and if it matches that, it'll run this. And this is just the name of a function, which will be attached here. So right now, let's come up with a hashtag. There are three different things. You can do um, exact match, so like that. So if it has post after it, it will always, it will take this. So if I did number post. So it actually matches that. Whoops. So number post. That's a match. Um, then if you use a colon, it's a parameter. So it can actually match anything. So I can put anything past this and it'll actually count as a parameter that gets sent into this function. So if we went like this, it would go post would be the parameter. It would be that first part of after the hashtag. Then the other thing you can do is star it means you match anything just like the parameter, except the parameter will only match the first thing by the slash. If you have a slash something else and your route had a colon, it would not match this because there's nothing there is nothing past this in our route. But with the star or asterisk, it will match anything. So that's all you need for that. You you can have slash that, slash whatever, slash whatever this whole thing will count as the variable that gets sent in to the function. Now the great thing about parameters is you can set up multiple like that. So you can it'll actually end up sending in two parameters. Um, when you're using a asterisk, these are called splats. These are called params. 
but if you're using a splat, it has to be at the end of the route, otherwise it won't know how many pieces to grab. Anyway, so let's let's set up a default to action. And these parameters do not have to match the words in the route, but it helps people understand. So we'll just do console.log action. Now, of course, we need to instantiate our router. But not only that, we need to do backbone.history.start. Um, it will, with if you don't call this, it won't be checking for changes with the hashtag after it. So you can add the hashtag after it and it won't do anything without calling history.start. So let's first let's try it without anything. See what we get. Console nothing. So let's try boot. or normal foo. Notice all these red keys are staying on the console because we're not actually changing refreshing the page or anything. We're staying on the same page. Okay, so now let's test the params. I haven't checked this yet actually, but I believe it reads through these and gets the, takes the first match. Uh, we'll do foo colon bar. So now it shouldn't uh, list the foo slash, it should list just what's after the slash. Unexpected string. Line 17. Oop, forgot the comma here. It just listed the bar. You can put anything here. But let's see what happens here. It used the one with the splat because, like I said, you can't have anything, or, or you can't have another slash part. Um, let's see if swapping these around will do anything. Okay, see so it listed the whole thing even though I had the foo, because it's dependent on the order. It'll take the first match that it finds. Um, so, man, that's pretty much all there is to it. You can use the functions to call page-specific things or to um, make something happen just by using hashtag um, so you can even you could just use any link here just put hash foo bar and you click on the link and it'll work so you can use this for interactive UI elements you can just use normal links and you don't even have to set any event listeners or anything on the link. It'll change the URL, and that will cause things to happen. And that's one of the cool things about this is you don't have, you don't have to do any of the DOM messing around 
adding listeners. Well, I guess that's just about all there is to it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Uh, happy coding. Bye.